this is my first time ever using these heavy harrows. We bought them last October, something like that. From a guy out near Swift Current. A good deal on them. They're a little different than these are brand uh, Commander heavy harrows. We have a set of I think they're Dagelman mid harrows. No, Borgo. Borgo, they're Borgo. And it's just the controls and how they set down pressures are a little bit different, how you run them. But overall, I'm, I'm quite, quite pleased with the purchase so far. Wild, hot, and heavy on my tail. Just got done this piece and he just crossed into it. Alright, so don't necessarily like the fact that I'm harrowing dead ahead of him. Over there, you see. But we kind of said, oh, well, that area is about 50, 60 acres. If you can get that done, you should be able to get this done ahead of the time it takes him to do that and possibly fill. You know, we're, we're kind of getting really tight on on time and space. But we're gonna try. Looks like Joey's pulling out. That's pretty much what we're gonna look like next year. Well, with that breathing down my neck, I started doing some math. I should be okay, but I figured I'd actually point out what the math that I'm doing is. Uh, so, one of the most common formulas I use on the farm is just trying to figure out how many acres per hour I'm doing. So there's an actual calculation, and then there's your rule of thumb. So. I just got a weird text. It says, Lily, thanks for the bouquet you sent me today. Come visit my sister's spa when you have time. So I think that's the wrong number. Or a scam. One of the two. Okay, let's do some quick math here. In order to figure out how many, what's my production or burn rate or whatever you want to call it, acres per hour is what I'm trying to figure out. And I've got two variables. And one's hardly a variable. Number one is my implement. And that's hardly a variable. Because once I'm hooked onto it, it doesn't really change in width. This one's 70 feet. The other variable is speed. And that does change a lot. So in this case, I'm doing 11 mile an hour. My implement's 70 feet. And you're trying to. We have stuff that are, are not working out. You have miles per hour, you have feet, and you're trying to figure out acres per hour. So there's gonna be some conversions in there. So let's take our 11 mile an hour times 70 feet gives me 770. Well, that's 770 feet miles per hour. Not really a useful one, but we know how many feet are in a mile. So let's take that 770 and we'll multiply it by 5,280. That works out to 4,065,600 square feet per hour. Simple from there, divide by 43,560, which is how many square feet are in an acre, and we get 93.3 acres per hour. That works okay, but to simplify things, we can take our two conversion factors and deal with them first and then memorize that number. So we can take our, our two conversion factors and divide them. 43,560 square feet per acre divided by 
divided by 5,280 feet in a mile. I know it was actually the other way on the formulas, but it works this way because we've taken it out and we're flipping it over. That works out to be eight and a quarter. So now I have a much simpler equation. I just have my implement width, 70 feet, times my speed in miles per hour, 11, divided by 8.25, works out to 93 and a third. Which is great if you've always got a calculator. And if you're going in a perfectly straight line at the same speed, with no stops, with no overlap, with you get my point, that's a perfect scenario. So what I do is I just round that 8.25 up to 10. Since it's round, that's yeah, kind of I just shift it up there. That gives us about an 18% fudge factor, which is pretty good. That's a pretty safe bet. I'm not going to spend all that time, but it's a really manageable number. And I like working with tens. In this case, 70 feet is my arrows, times 11 mile an hour, divided by 10, gives me 77 acres per hour. That's pretty close. So that number works really well, fairly average, fairly open fields. Works really good on most of our land. We do have some places where it's really windy and you end up doing a lot of overlap or you have to work yourself into a corner and then jog on over or there's some speeding up and slowing down and uh, sometimes you need to go fill and all this stuff. So a lot of times what I do is I divide by 12 instead of 10. And I can still do easy mental math on that because I'll do my 70 feet times 11 mile an hour, 770, divided by 10. But in order to divide by 12, I just take 10% of that 77 that we just got, which is 7.7, .7, and I'll round it again to a number I like. Whether that's, I like 7.5. I like 8 too. So I'll take 7.5 and, and I'll double it. So I got 15. So out of my 77 that I had, I take off another 15. That gives me 62 acres an hour is my worst case scenario. And I, I'm not gonna do, I'm gonna do way better than that out here. Dad, on the other hand, he's only going four mile an hour. You better be, we're doing canola, and he's 60 feet wide. So let's go back to the math. That gives us 60, 60 feet times four mile an hour is 240 divided by 10. Perfect, 24 acres per hour. So in the time it takes me to do 77 acres, he's only doing 24. So I'm gaining 50 acres an hour on him. I'm over in a parcel. I'm, like I said, I'm trying to stay ahead of dad. He just, he's doing that 50 acres that I started with. It's gonna take him a little over two hours. I'm over here on this parcel at 77. You know, pretty believable. That gives me 154 acres. I know this piece right here is 162 acres. So we are very close. I, if he's got to run and fill, or he's got to stop for any reason, we're in the clear. And then after that, I've got it will take him at least six hours, closer to seven hours. Plus he's probably got to fill. If he has, doesn't have to fill after what he's doing right now, he will definitely need to fill after this because we're only getting 200 acres of canola on a fill. Come here you, get on mine. So it will take him at least Upwards of seven hours to do this piece. 